Hello, Alex Cole with Bobcat Cam. In this video, what I'd like to cover is some Miltern topics that uh, I believe some people may have some confusion on. Uh, what I want to clarify is understanding the longhand output mode and the polar output mode. What those modes actually uh, mean, how they uh, generate code in the NC file, and then how the machine itself processes and runs that code on the machine. So I've got a part file here and I've already created two different features, one for longhand and one for polar. And so let's take a look at this file and we'll go over what some of those differences are. As we can see, I've got a machine set up on this file. My z-axis is coming out of the face. My x-axis is defined um, properly, my y-axis is going up. Now, I chose a feature that is not a concentric piece so that we can identify that one corner with the radius that's in there. So taking a look at the two features, um, the options that I'm uh, referring to in this video are defined on the posting page right here in the posting mode. We have longhand code, we have the auto y-axis mode which is typically used for cross machining, and then we have polar interpolation. Uh, this video is going to focus on longhand code and polar interpolation. So this feature is set as longhand code and if we look at the toolpath that is generated, we can see it's a, a profile toolpath going around the outside of the part. Uh, it's cut, cutting with a simple flat end mill. When we look at the polar mode toolpath, and again, if we look at those uh, parameters on the posting page, we'll see that this one is set to polar interpolation. But the toolpath looks identical on the screen. I can click between these two uh, toolpaths to display them, and you can see that they are identical and they overlap. However, when you post the code between these two operations, there are some major differences. So one thing that I would like to kind of explain is for a machine to, to cut this, it's going to do a combination of rotating the spindle and moving that tool in X. So let's look at simulation um, for the longhand operation. So I'll have to turn posting on and then go ahead and launch simulation. And we'll take a look at the actual machine motion that is generated to cut both of these. Um, on the machine, the, the actual motion will look identical to one another. Uh, but just so that you guys can see it here, we can see the tool is going to come in. It's going to position to the part. And the tool actually moves in and out along the x-axis of the machine as the part is being rotated in the spindle. And again, we're currently simulating the longhand feature. So we'll end that simulation and we will turn off posting on that one, turn on posting on the polar mode and we'll launch simulation for polar mode. And what we'll see is that the actual simulation and the way that it would run on the machine uh, is going to look pretty much identical. Um, and that's, that's to be expected. Um, and I'll explain why once we kind of start looking at the code. So here we can see um, it's, it's basically cutting with that same motion of moving the tool in and out along the x-axis while the part is being spun around. Now what's really good about this is if I have a large part and if I have a mill turn machine with a y-axis that only has so much travel, I can actually achieve much further cross motion uh, by rotating the part and moving X in and out. Um, but when we look at the code, this is where the difference really stands out between these two modes. So I want to start by posting the longhand mode first so that you can see 
what that code looks like. So generating the code, we can see it on the right over here, for the longhand cycle, we can see that this is built or, or output tons of X and C motion. And there's a lot of lines of code. In fact, I have gone ahead and plotted these points on a new layer so that you can see them. So if we go to our longhand points and I turn off our solid model and I turn on our toolpath. So our toolpath is visible in there and you can see all of these points are actually each a line of code from this program. And it's a combination of that X and C position that the machine needs to be able to end up cutting that shape. Now, outputting in longhand mode like this, um, depending on your tolerances and depending on the number of these points that are, uh, you know, around a profile, it will determine what the surface finish looks like on a part. However, you can um, adjust those to get those points tighter, which would generate more code, or you can leave that loose, which would give you less code, but will give you much more visible facets on your part. So this is good for machines that may not have um, support for what we're referring to as the polar mode. Um, and let's take a look at that and see exactly what polar mode is now that we kind of have an idea with longhand. So polar mode points and the polar mode toolpath, uh, we already determined that they look the same. And we've already determined that on the machine, they're somewhat going to act the same. What polar mode actually does is we're outputting in the G-code um, a call to a function on the machine controller that's commonly referred to as polar coordinate conversion. And what polar coordinate conversion does, if we post this code, you'll see that our program is much, much shorter. And the reason that it's shorter, if we look at the coordinates, we don't have those X and C coordinates. Now, there's going to be an important note there uh, that we're going to come back to in just a second. But the coordinates uh, that we actually get in this program are actually X, Y, and Z coordinates just like as if this was a three-axis mill machine. And because of that, the points that we get, there's, there's not nearly as many points as in the longhand program. You can see it's the endpoint of each entity like we would expect to see on a milling machines program. The reason is because the function that we're outputting is this G112, which um, FANUC based machines, there's G12, G112, G12.1, um, they're all this polar coordinate conversion uh, function. And what they do is they take X and Y coordinates and they convert that on the controller to the X and C motion. So the benefit of this is it allows us to generate a much shorter NC program to be able to cut a shape. But there's another benefit that is very important, and that is the polar coordinate function has been tuned by your machine manufacturer to give you the best possible surface finish and point distribution along the, the shape that you're cutting, as well as handling the feed rates that are required to give you a consistent uh, surface speed as you're, you're cutting through the part. So really using polar mode should result in a better looking part on your machine because it's been optimized by the manufacturer for that controller and equipment uh, our hardware um, components to, to give you the best possible, um, you know, cut that you can get. 
So really, Polar is is by far the 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 choice option, I'll say, uh, over longhand. But sometimes there are some restrictions with Polar. Some machines, for example, don't allow you to do helixes, or um, you know they're limited to two axis style cutting where you can't do three axis moves and, and that will vary by machine to machine um, and controller to controller based on what those support. So the polar coordinate program itself is, is very short. Now I had earlier mentioned that we have X and Y coordinates. <clears throat> Some of you in your G code programs may actually see that this is actually outputting with X and C coordinates, um, even in polar mode. And that's going to be dependent on what the prefix is for the Y axis part of the program. Um, some machine controllers are set up to where the Y axis component of a polar program still uses the prefix character of the letter C and it doesn't use the letter Y. So even though you still see X and C motion, um, the, the numerical values in the code actually represent a Y coordinate. Now, what's the big difference between these programs, like a polar program and a milling program? I had mentioned earlier that this is the same as a milling program. Well, that also is going to vary by controller configuration. Uh, because the x-axis component of the polar uh, coordinates may or may not need to be a diameter value like you would see with traditional turning or lathe operations, um, or it may be switched to where it's a radial value. And again, that will vary by um, machine controller and the way that it's set up and configured. Most machines are going to use the X component in a diameter value. The Y component will just be a, a Y component or a radial value. There, there, it would not be um, doubled like the X is to be in uh, you know, diameter mode um, and things like that. So, um, you know, th this is a very common function on most mill turn machines, this polar mode. And you can see that, you know, by looking at these two different layers of points, uh, the longhand mode is literally outputting all of these little tiny X and C moves to manually orient and configure uh, to get that tool to step where it needs to be to cut this shape. Um, but like on this corner, if you end up seeing that faceting on the part, then you may need to go in and adjust parameters to tighten those values up. Where with polar mode, um, the program is much shorter and the actual result is the same on the machine as far as what you're looking at, the way that it's going to be cut. Um, is, is going to be the same and that will pull up simulation so that we can see that once again but that is going to it's going to be a, an operation where the tool comes in and that tool is coming from the X and as the part rotates around that X is moving in and out to cut and leave the desired shape. So both of these will look like that when they get when when they machine. Um, however, the polar is going to do it with many less lines of code, and that code is something that's easier to read and understand because it's x and y coordinate positions that are fed, and then the function of the controller is converting that to x and c motion. So I know that there, we covered a lot of data in this, and it takes a little bit to absorb some of that. But hopefully this explanation um, can, can help clear up some confusion for you guys and help you to understand the difference between longhand and polar coordinates. Well, that's all for now. Thank you.